Hello, today I'm going to talk about uh, another application layer protocol which is called uh, FTP, File Transfer uh, Protocol, which is an application layer protocol in the TCP IP protocol stack. It's an application layer protocol in TCP IP protocol stack. Now FTP follows the client server paradigm where you have uh, FTP client in one side and you have an FTP server on the other side. Uh, of course, the client is the one which is going to request service from the FTP server. So the client is going to initiate opening a connection with the, uh, with the FTP server. So it's going to open connection with the FTP server. And the interaction between the FTP client and the FTP server is based on TCP protocol at the transport layer. To make it reliable uh, so it's connection oriented and reliable now FTP client will initiate opening connection with the FTP server to request to download some files from the FTP server it can either download file from the FTP server or upload file to the FTP server so these two operations basically can be done through the uh, file transfer protocol FTP you can either download something some material on the FTP server okay, in this direction or you can upload some material also to uh, the FTP server if you want to save them or store them there now what can we uh, talk further we can uh, say about FTP let's go in detail and talk about FTP protocol uh, FTP basically is a, an out-of-band protocol uh, how does this work? So first let me just represent an FTP client like this. This is an FTP client server or a computer. So all we have computer where FTP client process is running. And we have an FTP, uh, we have another computer where the FTP server is running. Uh, the two computers are uh, connected through the network or they can reach each other through a network, let's say a local area network. Now, when the FTP process is running here, it means the uh, client wants to communicate with the FTP server. Uh, the FTP server is always listening on uh, port uh, 21. This is port 21. And the FTP server is always listening at this port for any incoming request. So let's say the FTP client is going to initiate opening TCP connection with the FTP server at port uh, 21. Uh, of course, 21 is a well-known port and is the default port used by FTP protocol. This is default port. Of course, it can be changed if you want. On the FTP client, we have a process running and this process is going to be uh, assigned a port number by the operating system, uh, which is 50,000, just, just as an example, 50,000. So the operating system will assign uh, number 50 the port uh, 50,000 to the FTP client process okay and uh, this process basically is running here and establishing connection with the FTP server now the purpose of this connection here is to send comments so you're going to send comments okay so what type of command you can either request a file from FTP server or you can upload a file to the FTP server so the first connection that you see here, uh, TCP connection, is dedicated to comments. So you use it to send orders to uh, uh, FTP server uh, to initiate, let's say, some download or upload. So as soon as you send this comment, the FTP client, uh, or let's say the FTP server, after receiving this command, it's going to open a second TCP connection with the client, let's say at port uh, 50,001, okay? Uh, it will be incremented with respect to the previous one. If port 50,001 is used, then the next available port, at least as it has, uh, it has been used by some operating system. And this connection here will start, will be initiated by the FTP server, and it will start at port 20 at port 20. So the FTP server is going to open another TCP connection with the FTP client. And the purpose of this TCP connection is to send data, data only. 
So if you want to uh, download a file, so the file is going to be sent through the second connection. The file as data now is going to be transferred using the second connection. Uh, if you want to send some data for upload, this data also will be transferred through the second connection. So for download and for upload, the data will use the second connection. So the first connection here is only for comments. Now uh, we say that FTP is an out-of-band protocol because it uses two connections or two channels, one channel to send comment and another channel to send data. So it separates between uh, comments and data. Now we have uh, two types of FTP. So we can say that we have to distinguish between two types of uh, FTP settings. We have uh, what we call active FTP and we have passive FTP. Okay, so we have active and passive FTP. What is the difference between active FTP and passive FTP? It's very important to understand this because building access list to permit or deny access to an FTP server uh, is very challenging when you uh, deal with an FTP uh, protocol with the FTP protocol. So if you want to build an access list to restrict access to an FTP server uh, or to permit access to an FTP server from a specific host or a local area network or a group of LANs, it's very important to understand or to know what type of FTP is being used or what type of FTP is going to be denied or permitted. And that's why most of the time implementing an access list on Cisco routers and switches and things like that is very challenging when it comes to uh, FTP protocol because of this issue here out of band. So you have to, to deal with two connections. So you have uh, one connection which is used for comments, another, comment, uh, another connection for data. So let's start first with the uh, active FTP. The, okay, now with the active FTP, we have an FTP client process. Okay, let me just represent it like this. This is an FTP client process. And on the other side, we have the FTP server process. Of course, these processes are running on computers, okay? And these computers are reachable across network. Now, the first thing, the client is the one which is going to initiate opening TCP connection with the FTP server, which is listening at port 21. This is the well-known port. So the operating system will create a process assigned to this process port 50,000, okay, for example. Okay, it's client, and then the client will trigger or initiate opening TCP connection with the FTP server. And then through this connection, the client is going to send all the comments, either for download or upload. Now, what we have to understand is that each time the FTP client will send command, automatically it's going to send uh, a socket about another process which is going to be created here by the FTP client and which will be using, let's say, port 50,001, let's say, incremented with respect to the first one. So as soon as the FTP client will send command, okay, as a first part, second, it will send uh, the socket, which is the IP address and the port used by the second process. So it's going to send the socket about the second process here. Now, the FTP server is going to receive this command. It's going to receive the socket of the second process, as you see here, and it will use this information. It will use this information. It knows actually the socket of this process which has been initiated uh, by send, after sending this command. It's going to know, it's going to use this information to establish another, the second TCP connection which starts at port 20 directly to the port number which has been uh, which is used by the second process which is 50001 in our example because if FTP server is going to initiate opening TCP connection from its side at port 20 it needs to know uh, the port number on the other side the IP address and the port number on the other side how does it know these things 
because this information has been provided just right after sending the command right after the FTP client has sent the command to the FTP server for either download or upload and then uh, it continues sending the uh, IP address uh, of the, the, the FTP client of the machine where the FTP client is running and the port number of new process which has been created by the FTP client okay now this is a socket on the FTP client side of the second process which has just been started FTP server will use this information to establish connection directly with this process and this connection will start at port uh, 20 at port 20 now this uh, this example of FTP uh, this is what we call active FTP active FTP in the sense that uh, FTP server is the one which is actively uh, opening a TCP connection with the FTP client in order to exchange the data between uh, the client and the server so you can either have data which goes from the FTP server to the client in the case of download or data which goes from client to the server in the case of upload but most important thing to remember is that the FTP server is the one which initiate uh, the second TCP connection at port 20 okay with the FTP client after receiving this information uh, right after the command on the first TCP connection now for the for the passive uh, FTP for the passive FTP so I'm going to jump to the second uh, case here things are a little bit different how it works let me just uh, represent again the same thing here I'm going to represent the FTP clients like this this is the FTP client and this is the FTP server okay and as we know the FTP server is always listening at port uh, 21 port comments port 2021 like this now uh, the FTP client is going to trigger or initiate opening TCP connection with the server let's say this connection is uh, start from a process FTP client process which is using port 50 uh, thousand of course it's the operating system which is in charge of uh, assigning this port number to the FTP client process so it's going to open this TCP connection with the FTP server at port 21 okay and then and then the next thing the client is going to send comments so the, the, the client will use the first connection to send comments either for download or upload now what will happen in this scenario here the FTP server uh, is going to create another process is going to create a process here okay and this process will have port let's say uh, this process is listening on port 60,000 let's say okay and then is going to send uh, information th through the, the first CCP connection it will send the information uh, which consists IP address of the machine where the FTP server is running and port 60,000 this is the process which is uh, which, which which is started by the FTP server and this process which is going to handle the data between the FTP client and the FTP server so the FTP server is going to send a socket to uh, the client once the client will have this information here is going now to trigger initiating it is going to trigger initiating TCP connection with the uh, process that has been uh, created by the FTP server at port 60,000 of course here we can say that the port will be something like 50,000 one it has been incremented with respect to the first one but the new implementation of uh, FTP protocol in newer operating system uh, they try to make the port on the for the data connection uh, not guessed not easily not to be guessed easily actually so they try to avoid this increment by one they just try to generate port randomly or according to uh, allocation strategy defined by the operating system so now uh, the uh, client knows exactly what is the socket used by the uh, process on the client side okay which is uh, IP of the this IP address of the FTP server and 60,000 is the port number used by 
the process created by the FTP server to handle the data between it and the client. So now the client knows this information which has been received through the uh, first connection here. What it will do now is going to uh, open another process like, like this. It will open another process. And this process will be listening at part 50,001. And this process will be in charge, will be the one who is going to trigger uh, establishing a connection with the uh, FTP server. That's why in this situation, the FTP server is passive. It is passive. So it is not the one which is triggering uh, opening TCP connection for data with a client. No, it is going to receive the uh, connection from the request for connection from the client. That's why we call this uh, passive FTP protocol. This is passive FTP. So let's go back to the previous one. In the first scenario here, first case in active FTP, it is the FTP server which is going to initiate the data connection, the, the TCP connection for data at port 20 with the FTP client. So the, uh, the con let's say we can represent with this color like this, with this arrow, this arrow just to say that initiation is achieved, is done by the FTP server. This connection is done by the FTP server. And uh, for passive, it's different, it's the other way around. Uh, it is the client which is going to initiate opening a TCP connection with the uh, FTP server, of course, after receiving the information about socket. So uh, understanding the difference between active FTP and passive FTP is very important. Uh, especially for those who are going to build an uh, access list on Cisco routers and switches. Uh, because if you don't really understand the difference between active and passive FTP, uh, building an access list will be uh, very, very difficult. Uh, make it work will be uh, always a difficult task. And uh, access list for FTP has always been challenging. Um, it's a challenging task. Uh, that's why I hope this video uh, was useful to help you understand this topic. Thank you for listening.